Hi guys, I'm Darren. In this video, we're going to try and clarify the different types of stabilized FreeSky receivers and how you use the different types. I've been getting quite a few questions about different types of FreeSky receivers. Some people are having issues where they can't um, enable the stabilization. They'll switch it on and it will just switch off. And a lot of these problems are because there are basically three different types of stabilized receiver and they all have slight differences. So what we're gonna do is check out in this video the current state of how things are and what you would use with each type of receiver to get it to work. Now, there are three main differences between the different receivers. The first is the tool that you use to configure them. The second is the method you use to operate the self-check. And the third are the channels that you use to change stuff like the gain and the mode of operation. And we're gonna cover all those in this video. But first, let's take a look at the different types of receivers you can get and which category they fall into. Right, so I don't have all receivers here. So we're just gonna use the website to take a look at the different types of receiver. Now, the first type is the oldest type of stabilized receiver, and that is the S6R, the S8R, but also includes the R9 Stab. And these receivers are generally known as the SXR receivers. So you can see that why, because we have the name S8R, so the X just replaces the number. So the SAR is an SXR type receiver. You can see these are both ACCST receivers. They're quite old receivers. To use them with EFOS, you would need to update the receiver firmware to the latest ACCST V2 standard. Now let me check just in case they can use access as well. No, so they're only ACCST. You need to install this latest 2.1.1 driver and that will get everything working for you. Going chronologically, the next set of stabilized receivers, a lot of them aren't available anymore, but you may still have old ones that you've pre-bought or they may even still be for sale in some retail outlets, but they're discontinued as there's something that's replacing these. And these are the Archer SRX receivers. Now I've added Archer here for a very specific reason. We'll find out later, but you can see why they're called SRX. The model names are, for example, the SR10. So SR and replace the number with an X. So the SR10, the SR8 and the SR6 are all these SRX receivers. And these again have a slightly different setup to the SXR receivers. These were always Archer, so they're access only. They'll work with EFOS, but I'd recommend using the latest firmware. It's always worth being on the latest firmware because new features could be added and also there could have been a bug discovered that has been since resolved. So finally, we have this new lineup of receivers called the Archer Plus series. So these are Archer Plus SRX receivers. And again, you can see why they have the same SR6, um, there'll be a 10, yeah, SR10, and I can't see a 12 yet. Oh yeah, sorry, SR12. So they have the same SRX name, but these are Archer Plus, not Archer. And these ones actually use a different script to program. So it's important to make that distinction. But there's more. Also joining the Archer Plus SRX receivers are the Tandem stabilized receivers. So these will be Tandem SRX, but they're all grouped together with the Archer Plus. It's the same setup. There's only the SR18 and SR12 at the moment. At this current point in time, there are no stabilized receivers on the twin liner, but that will probably change in the future. FreeSky want to have all the different options available for both protocols. So when they're introduced, I'd imagine they would also join the Tandem and Archer Plus style setup because that's the latest setup and anything new is not gonna use something old. So when twin stabilized receivers start coming about, I'd expect them to use the same as the Archer Plus SRX setup. But if you wanna check, there's one thing that you can do. If you pop into a manual, so this is the manual for the TDR12, scroll down until you find the channel numbers. And if it's using the new setup, you'll find that the gain is on channel 13, the flight modes are on channels 14 and 15, and the emergency mode is on channel 16. This is different to the older two setups where they were on channels nine to 12 respectively. 
Right, so we've just mentioned one difference and that is the channel numbers. So I may as well start with that. Now, as I explained briefly, you can see each channel has a function. So the first channel is the gyro gain adjustment. The next two channels are the flight modes. And the last channel they've got for emergency mode on this, but in older versions, this was also the self-check channel. The difference being the channel numbers that these features are actually on. These are fixed channels. You can't really change them. All you could potentially do is remap the pins on some receivers like the Archer lineup onwards. And you can see that actually most of the time you won't need to because they're above channel 12. It's only if you've got like an 18 channel receiver that you might want to remap so that the actual pinouts for 13, 14, 15 are maybe starting on channel 17. Most of the time you won't need to worry about it. This is why the channels have been changed. On the original SXR receivers, so the S6R, the S8R and the R9 stab, you had gain adjustment on channel 9. We had flight modes on channels 10 and 11. And we had the self-check on channel 12. And that is still the case. These channels haven't changed. Maybe in the future they could be changed with firmware, but at the moment they are on those channels still. Same goes for the Archer SRX. So the Archer SR10 Pro, the Archer SR8 Pro and the Archer SR6. They'll be using channel 9 for the game, channels 10 and 11 for the flight modes and channel 12 for the emergency mode. It's not until we get to these new Archer Plus and TD SRX receivers that the modes have changed. And this is what we're looking at here. This is the TD SR12. And we, we find we have the gain on channel 13, the modes on channels 14 and 15, and the emergency mode on channel 16. So that is one difference in how you set these things up. You need to account for which channels those modes are on for when you set up your mode switch and your gain switch. So that's the first thing to watch out for. For the next two things, we're gonna head over to the radio. Okay, so the next thing is how do we actually set up these devices on our radio? So if you've been using EFOS for a while, you'll already know where these things are. Um, but in device config, we have SXR and SXR. These two tools here are what you would use with the SXR line of receivers. So the SXR, S8R and R9 stab but also the Archer SRX receivers. So that's the Archer SR10 Pro, the Archer SR8 Pro, and the Archer SR6. They're set up using these two tools that come as standard on the radio. And you just go into the tool and change what you need to change in here. I don't actually have any receivers connected up because we don't really need it for this demo. But if you enable and disable the um, stabilization, it will work just fine with those receivers. Same with the calibration, you would use this tool to calibrate those lineup of receivers. Where it differs is with the new receivers. So this is the Archer Plus SR12+, Plus, the Archer Plus SR10+, Plus, the Archer Plus SR6, and also the Tandem SR12 and the SR18. Those receivers, you would actually need to download a Lua script and you go into the system tools and you'll find two new tools. So there's the SRX stable tool and the SRX calibration tool. And you would use these new tools for the new types of stabilized receivers. And it's in there where you would have the stabilizing on and off so one of the things I often see is people ask for the uh, SRX enable doesn't work. And that tells me that they're using the wrong tool because it's now called stabilizing in this tool. So that's one thing to check. If you're using one of the new receivers and it says SXR enable, you're in the wrong tool. You want to be in this SRX stable tool. So they are the tools that you use. If you want to know how to install these Lua tools, I do have a video on that, so I'll put a link up in the top corner and I'll also include it in the video description. But that was the second difference between all these different types of receivers is the tool that you actually use. And the final thing that's different is this thing right here, self-check. 
And the self-check is the operation that you do to sort of calibrate your endpoint. So you, you'd put it in self-check mode. When the blue light on the receiver is flashing, you move your sticks to the full extent, let it go, and then it, it will complete the self-check and calibration of your ranges. If you've got uh, multiple rates, make sure you're in high rates when you do this. So for the Archer Plus and Tandem SRX receivers, you would enable self-check in this tool, go through the process, and then when it exits, it will sort of automatically switch the self-check off. So for those receivers, you need to do it in that tool. Let's go back to the regular um, device config page because there are two different ways here. We were just talking about Archer Plus, so let's carry on going backwards in time and we'll go to the original Archer stabilized receivers, the Archer SRX receivers. To do self-check on those, you go down to the bottom in here and you do self-check on here. Again, do the, the gimbals when the blue LED is flashing in high rates. And again, once it's finished, it will automatically switch self-check off. For the older SXR receivers and the R9 stab, you actually need to use channel 12, the self-check channel, and you flick the switch a few times. It enters the self-check mode and then you carry on with the procedure. So that is the difference in the self-check. And actually that is the main differences between the different types. Now I do have to add a caveat to this video. EFOS 1.5 is going to be coming out probably early 2024. There could be changes when that come out and I'd imagine there probably will be. The first change that I can imagine is that the Archer Plus SRX tool, so the one you use for Archer Plus and Tandem and probably in the future twin receivers, that will probably no longer need to be downloaded as a Lua script. It will probably be included in the firmware. So that will probably, <laughs> so a lot of probabilities here because I don't actually know what's happening, but I would imagine it will move to that device config page. That's where it really belongs. So I'd imagine it will move in there and maybe the naming will be changed to make both tools more obvious what they are. Also, as I mentioned earlier, there's always a possibility that the firmware for older receivers will change so that the channel mappings will match on all the receivers. It would actually be really cool if that was done I know it means selling, changing setups on models, but it would make things a lot smoother in the future and also free up those ports for most receivers without you having to do anything. The reason it started on channel nine, originally the receiver with the most pinouts was the S8R, which only had eight. So starting on channel nine was absolutely fine because you couldn't access those pins anyway. It wasn't until the SR10 came out where hang on, now I've got two channels I can't really use without rearranging stuff. So there may in the future be firmware changes. I'm not saying there will be. I'm just saying that this, the information in this video is potentially subject to change. So the best thing to do is check those manuals. Everything you, can, everything you need to know will be in the manual, such as how to do the self-check, what channels the different stabilization options are on. The script may not be. That's maybe something that FreeSky could include in the manual. Oh yeah, on the SR12, it does actually show you. I'm just looking at that right now. It says use the SRX stable tool. So it is in the manual as well for which tool to use if you can identify them from visually. The information is there. So if you're unsure, check the manuals. You can find everything out in there. But I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please remember to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe and bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people so they can learn about this too, but also it will alert you when other topics come out that you may also find interesting. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Fly models like you stole them if you can get out. The weather is absolutely abysmal here. Been rained for about four weeks, solid. But if you can, fly models like you stole them and have fun. See you later, guys.